Hello everyone. Welcome back to the third video of this tutorial series. In this video, we will push our code to GitHub and see how the GitHub actions work. And then finally, we'll create an application load balancer and finish this tutorial series. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Now push your code to the GitHub repository or create a PR from your fork. Either way, this push tag will work for PRs and commits directly as well. So I have already done that and let's see how the workflow looks like. Come to your actions tab and open your latest commit or pull. You can see it's starting, it's setting up the job. It has taken the name and it will do the required thing. It set up the JDK successfully and now it's building. We'll have to wait till this build finishes and we'll see how it works. So the build has started finally. This was all just set up for uh, uh, your Gradle and other things. Configuration of AWS credentials also done. Logging in also done. Now we are building the tags and pushing it. So you can create a Docker image however you like. It's a very simple way to do it. I already have covered all this in my uh, Google Kubernetes engine video. So you can either look into that or you can create your own. This is our backend so we cannot show this. So it's all pushed, tagged successfully, everything done successfully. Yeah, it's pushed. Yeah, now it's pushing the new image ID, basically the new task that it will create. And now you can see that it has started deploying and we can watch this in our AWS ECR console. Click on the link and you can see what the, the survey has started. You can see the logs. There are no logs right now since it's just started. So it has stopped the previously running task and now it's restarting the new task. So it's starting a new task. If you keep refreshing it, you will see, see the logs have started coming and now it's all done and it's working properly. We'll have to wait till the service actually deploys and then we can check out the URL. The URL uh, or the IP address will most likely not work because the port mapping that we have given is 0 to 8080. That is required for our load balancer. So for now we can do one thing is we can change it in our service I believe it was. One second, let me go to the services and update it once. Uh, it was in our task definition, correct. It was in our task definition. Any uh, task definition or I think it was in our task definition. Create new revision. And this will push a new, it will restart our container. So we'll do that later. For now, let's wait for it to get deployed. But do not need to worry, even if it is not working, it will work with the application load balancer. So you can see here all the utils, it's utilizing 0.11% CPU and 20, around 30% memory. And we'll see our build. So you can see since it has started, uh, basically the logs are coming for it has done its job of starting the application. So it has completed this task successfully. So this GitHub action has been executed successfully and the command has been handed over to the AWS ECS. So here we'll see all the logs. So here we can see application has been started. Now to get your IP address, you need to go to 
service ECS instance and click on ECS instance and here is where you will get your IP address if you copy paste it it will not work because as I said the container is 88, uh, 0 to 8080 so next we will see how to set up our uh, application load balancer and finish this tutorial with that now let's see how to create our application load balancer head on to your AWS account and go to EC2 page here go down and you have target groups we need to create a new target group let the target type be instance and uh, we'll give it name as enigma hyphen lb hyphen tg protocol 80 vpc is fine health check will be health this you can give whatever you have given as health port in your or health url in your application and then healthy threshold is 2 unhealthy is 9 timeout is 5 and interval is 60 and success code is 200 we'll go to next and this is the instance type that is running for our EC, ECS instance that is what we want to include and this will be our target group that will be included in our uh, target group so we'll create this target group and this has been created so next is what we need to add a load balancer to it so to create an application load balancer go to the load balancers we'll create a new load balancer and r will be application load balancer type we'll create it give it name as enigma hyphen lb it will be internal internet facing it will be ipv4 correct mappings take anyone uh, we can take any of the two it's fine doesn't matter so we have taken the default we'll take 80 currently nothing else and I guess that is it so let's create a load balancer okay one target group okay we have we have to attach the basically the target group here so we have attached our target target group that we just created so that should be good enough and we'll create the load balancer so we'll see the load balancer and you can see we have gotten a dns name so this will be the url of our uh, website so it's not the name is not resolved okay so our uh, security group does not allow traffic on this listener port so let's go to our uh, security group and we'll edit the inbound rules here since we only have postgres we need to edit inbound rules and add another rule for http protocol and it should be anywhere and we'll save the rules and now if we refresh and check out our listeners so see now the uh, error has gone and let's refresh and it should be working now so you can see it's working fine it's giving 502 gateway that is because a server is not up right now so this won't work So the reason why it's not working is basically you remember that in our ECS we had uh, in our task we had given the container to map from 0 to basically 8080 that is for HTTPS requests I forgot that I got confused so it's basically for HTTPS we need this but for HTTP we need only 80 so if we update this and then redeploy it then our dns server is working fine so that was a small error from my side sorry for that so our application load balance is working fine now further what you can do is attach uh, your own personal uh, custom domain to it basically go to your dns server and update a dns record 
and that should work. For more details, you can see there will be some Amazon ECS doc, so, uh, AWS related doc. So that is where you can check that. So this is completed, and our service is working fine. This is our backend data that uh, we are getting, and our application load balancer has a set up properly. So you can see we have no errors. So that is it for this video and for this tutorial series. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching this.